Hi everybody, it's Joe Krug from FinSuite. In this video, we're going over the FinSuite CMS library for Webflow. We're in the live example going through the filter component. Let's see filter work with pagination. We're using the load more component. We're using the filter component. We're using the new pagination option and they work together. Let's go and see this working live. We have the filter colors. We pulled this right from our filter example. We have our load more. We pulled this right from our load more example. We are adding pagination and we're going to filter through this list and the pagination will update with us. Watch as I click blue, this pagination updates. Red, updates, update, update. We are updating the pagination in real time as we are filtering through the list. So me as the user, I wanna see blue, red, and orange. I can now go and filter through that list. Excellent. I wanna go and remove orange. I can now filter through the list of only blue and red. So we're filtering items, they're updating in the pagination. The pagination is updating itself and we're still only showing five items per page. Let's get into Designer, let's see how this works. Inside Designer, we are going to go and check out our filters. I'm not going to go through the filters in deep example here. I'm not gonna go through load more in deep example. And the reason is, this is a continuation of you already knowing filter and you already knowing pagination. So if you have no idea about how to filter with our library, please go and check out example one or two or three or five or four. Just go and check out some filter example beforehand and then go into this. Same with load more. Please go check out example one, two or three and then jump into this. It, you need a base understanding of how this works and this video is really revolving around pagination. Great, so we have our filters wrapper, we have our filter buttons. We are using our filter by data attribute here. This is the standard setup we have for filters. Then we have our collection list. And here in the collection list, we are using the native Webflow pagination. We're not showing the native Webflow pagination, but we're using it. And the reason is we need to go and apply a class to this load more button. We have next load more button, that's going to be used inside the custom code. The important thing you need to know here is this pagination container. This is the class that we will use to insert our pagination element into. So we have our pagination container. This is where we go and paste, append this element right here. This pagination element is going right inside this class. You can see we have horizontal, align center, justify center, so that element is centered. All right, let's go into the custom code. That's where the real money of this video comes into play. Let's go in and see what this looks like. We're in example 10, filter with pagination simple. And as I go before the closing body tag, we're going to see that this code looks very long. Do not worry, it is broken up into two separate parts. We're going to go over this, it is not very difficult. First, we're going to set our instance collection list. This is our dynamic list on the page and we're setting that as a variable called projects grid. Projects grid is going to be used in both the filter and the load more. So we have our projects grid filter. We also have our projects grid load more. So we are only creating one instance. I'm gonna say that again. We're only creating one instance of the library. That instance is on the same collection list. Projects grid is going to be used as a variable on both the filter and the load more. You can see that these are broken up. This is the load more component. This is the filter component. Great. As I said, we're not going over the filter. This is the same exact setup, copy paste from example one in filters. Let's get into the load more. That's where the pagination gets juicy. We have our load all set to true. This is a requirement for pagination. It has to be true. We're loading all the items inside the pagination. The pagination needs to accept those items. Paginate, 
check it out. We have this pagination, open curly bracket, close curly bracket. Make sure they are surrounded with these normal option commas. Great. Inside pagination, we have enable true. Of course, we want to enable it. We're making it true. There it is. Items per page. This can be whatever you want. We have five right here, and you can see five items. One, two, three, four, five. If we set it to 10, it would be two rows, and it would be 10. If we set it to 50, it would be 10 rows, and it would be 50. This pagination element is going to update no matter how many items there are per page, no many, how many items you have in the collection list, how many items are showing in the filter. We built it to be plug and play. Everything is going to update based on how many actual items are there for the user to go and interact with. Great, let's go and talk about insert pagination. That's the important class of pagination container that we were looking at before. So pagination container, blank div, we have the class on it. We're going to insert the pagination element inside this div. And that's where we see this centered right here on the page. The outer element is our pagination container with flex center center. Cool. Then we have the background color, background color active, text color, text color active, and border color. The background color and the background color active is the background of these pages, of these buttons. Next, previous, one, five, 10, whatever. This purple is the background color active. Whatever page is active here, that's what it is. Great. Then we have the text color and text color active. Text color is this purple, uh, or actually black. The text color is black, and then the active text color you could see on this purple is white. So you can set these states, and this is all you really need to do to make that pagination element work, have a good experience, and have that styled to your site. And of course, we have border color. This is an important one. This is going to create the border that goes around this element, as well as the lines that are breaking it up and setting that hex is going to border the whole thing with that color. Cool. In this example, I'm setting animation to false, and you can set it to true if you want. You can set this to true, the, the filter here in the grid. I like it false. I really like this, this concept of really fast, real-time feeling pagination. Really cool. Great. Let's talk about CSS styles. I knew I was forgetting something here. Let's go and get back up to the head. We have made our classes that create this pagination element easy to understand. FS pagination, pagination page, pagination prev, inactive, active, dots, and next. If you wanna go and add more custom CSS, you can do whatever you want to this pagination element. You can style it in many different ways. You can make it huge, you can make it tiny, you can make it vertical, you can do anything here. And there's going to be a separate video to show you how we can approach this styling with Inspector and these classes. For now, we are done with the filter with pagination example. If you're interested in a more advanced filter, check out example 11. We will go through a full filter complex system with this same pagination logic. Thanks for checking this out. If you have any questions, we'd love to help you with our JavaScript service, sweetjs.io. For now, enjoy pagination. We are pumped to see what you do with this. That's effing sweet.